Hello and welcome to Evangel Online. This is your channel where you can discover what's happening at Evangel right now and how you can be a part of it. Evangel is one church in multiple locations, including right here online. Feel free to explore our videos to see what God is doing in and through our church. You'll find stories of people just like you whose lives have been changed. People who are growing together, serving others, and making a difference in the world. You'll also find all sorts of resources to help you grow in your faith journey. From sermons and additional content from Pastor Jordan, to music from Evangel Worship, fun videos for kids, and content for teenagers to help them grow into confident adults, Evangel is a place that no matter where you're at, we want you to encounter Jesus. God has something so special for you, and we want to come alongside you and help you discover what that is. So subscribe here, check out all the content that's available to you through the links below. Thank you for watching and subscribing, and as always, welcome home. Shalom. You are the. You are not just here as a Sunday morning. It's tradition. You are here because you're hungry for the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Well, it is great to be here. And uh, at the end, uh, as as Pastor Jordan said, uh, they asked me to sound the shofar. So I'm going to sound it for freedom, jubilee, blessings in your life, all that God has for you. That's the sign. And I will, he's also asked me to give you the ironic blessing. This is God's blessing. This is not my, this is God's actual blessing that he gave. So I will do that as well. And hopefully in the morning, I don't know, how many of you were in the morning? Okay. We, we had the, we didn't have sound for that clip, but they promised me there's going to be sound. So we're going to try that. We're going to do that again. But I have a lot to share with you. Again, as I shared at the beginning, no matter how much I, sh I, I do, there's so much more. And so for that reason, as soon as, this, as soon as it ends, I will go out there and I'll meet you. I will sign all the books that you, uh, you give me, as much, stay as long as I can with that um, right after. So let me tell you before we go full blast, as I do before, what they will have, especially for you who are here for the first time as well. Um, number one, they'll have the book of mysteries. And now I, I said, now it's going to open up hundreds of the mysteries of God, not only to get blown away, but have your life change. But also I said that that people are giving them to unsaved people, this book. And I said, nobody has turned that down and people are getting saved. Well, someone came up to me while I was signing books and said, well, told me of one where someone sort of turned it down. She sent it to her son who was in prison. And instead of him reading it, he gave it to a friend in prison. And he said, Ma, he said that the friend started changing and now the friend has come out of prison and he's in ministry. He came to the Lord through it. So uh, that's good too. So people in your life, get it for that. And I'm saying if you have the books, get it for other people uh, in your life. So that's one. Second is the Harbinger 2. This is what is happening now, where it's going. The Lord had me wait until the time, write this for the time of shaking, that it's, it's really what's happening now, started with the Harbinger, it's continuing, and what is coming. Third is the Oracle, only book I've written specifically opening up end time prophecy Jerusalem, Israel, boy, are we in prophetic times. And with the last days, the countdown to the end. I thought I had the paradigm, but I didn't, so I said that this morning. But the other one, the next is the return of the gods. That is an explosive mystery um, that I began, uh, the, actually was the last one before the last book, and that is the spirits, the gods, the principalities that are actually working from ancient times, the dark trinity of spirits that are actually affecting everything you're all, we're all dealing with it right now. And the last one is the Josiah Manifesto, which is the newest book which I'm giving a taste of this weekend of some of the mysteries of it, the ancient mystery and guide for the end times. What if God was actually giving us a guide for now, what we need to do the, um, and what we need to do to be prepared for what's coming and how to overcome. So they'll have that there. My calling is to get the word out to encourage you, not only for yourself, but but you give it to people in your life. You guys are great. You always scoop up the books, but for people in your life as well, um, what they're going to do is, and I only do it where I speak, and that is the books, can, they're hard covers. They list on, for uh, they can list for like $30. They're going to be $15, but if you get one, two, three, four, five, it'll go down and down until it gets to $10. That's like nothing. That is like McDonald's, okay, as I said. So, but you can't save anybody with a Big Mac. So, 
but you can with this. So take advantage of it. It's going to be the lowest tonight ever anywhere. Um, and lastly, the last resource that is unique that is nowhere else, and that's it's not even on, you can't get it on Amazon or anywhere pretty much. I only do this where I speak. That is the Josiah Manifesto Uncensored. That is the eight DVD album where you're going to see the prophetic things happening. It has uncensored the mysteries that I put nowhere else, not even in the book. Um, and actually, you'll see prophetic things happening. And as I mentioned, this actually, the, the mystery actually foretold what would happen in Israel when, when the invasion came in October, what would happen, when it would happen, and it may foretell exact events when they will happen in the days to come. So because it came true after the book, I added a ninth video in there that is gonna could enable you to see what is actually going to happen. So that's all there. Um, and uh, last thing, if you want to get prophetic updates, free gifts from the ministry, it's hopeoftheworld.com. Um, and they will have some sheets. If you put your contacts, you'll get all the free gifts. And that's it. Are we ready? Amen. Father, we praise you tonight. We thank you for you. Lord, we ask your blessing, Father, and your hand upon all things, Father. I ask, my, Lord, in my weakness, be strong in your power and touch your people. In Yeshua, Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Well, look, for those who are here this morning, or for those who weren't here this morning, we began opening up some of the prophetic mysteries. What if we've been living through a prophetic mystery of God the last few years, everything that's been happening? What if God was speaking through it and giving us a revelation through it? We began on the island of Cuba, and then we went to the mystery of the Jubilee, the 50-year mystery, and saw how that actually lay behind what happened with COVID, what happened 50 years before with what we did to the children, some things to the exact days happening. We saw the template of Jehu um, and, and linked the link to our political realm as well. We saw the mysteries converge into a single day. Now, there are so many, but we can't open up all, but I want to open up more tonight. And the thing is today, and actually it was today because, you know, it was last night in America, but it was Sunday in Israel, we saw something very dramatic happen in our world. And that is Iran sent 300 missiles to the land of Israel. First time Iran ever directly struck Israel. And so is that significant? Is it prophetic? Well, number one, it is because it all concerned Israel. And the Bible says that in the last days, the world will be focused on what? Israel, the size of New Jersey, and yet the whole world is again, you know, do you realize how much the world is focused on Israel continuously? That makes no sense except God said it would happen. For the Lord to come again, Israel has to be back and the world has to focus on it. Secondly, Israel was attacked. The Bible speaks of the end times that Israel will be attacked. There'll be a massive Armageddon is all nations attacking. So we are watching this, even that is a sign of it. But even specifically, Ezekiel 38 and 39, Ezekiel gives a prophecy of what will happen. He specifically dates it to the last days when Israel has been, the Jewish people have been spread around the world, have come back to Israel. He speaks of a specific invasion before Armageddon of nations. He names nations. One of the nations that he names in Hebrew, in that prophecy, he says is called Paras. Paras is the Hebrew word for Persia. Persia was around in ancient times. It's been around ever since. It has pretty much been unchanged as a people. In the 20th century, Persia changed one of its name to Iran. And so here it is saying in Ezekiel that in the end times, Iran will be against Israel and will seek to invade Israel. Now, for much of the time that we were alive, it, well, actually, some of you are alive, is that it was the relationship with, with Iran and Israel was actually friendly. And people were saying that's not going to happen. But at the end of the 1970s, the Shah of Iran, some of you remember it, was overthrown in a revolution that put the Ayatollahs in power. And all of a sudden, Iran became a radical, Islamic, extreme, terrorist-supporting nation. It is now Israel's arch enemy, really just as the Bible said. 
And so, you know, last week, I'm just giving you this, and I didn't plan any of this, but I need to, we need to be aware of the signs of the time. Last week, Israel struck uh, the embassy of Iran in Syria because Iran is sponsoring terror all over the Middle East. And so they had a general there who, they, it just came out today, may have been behind what happened on October 7th with Hamas. An Iranian general, they struck him. They, 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 it was two Irani, Iranian generals. So Iran says, we are gonna come, we're gonna attack you back. So this is the first time though ever that Iran has attacked Israel, but you know, Praise God, 99% of those rockets were struck down before they could do any damage. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. You know, now the thing is, now I think one Arab girl was actually hurt, and we should pray for that, and, but not much more than that. So now Israel has to decide what does it do. Biden has said, we really don't want you to do anything because it's enough that you had a victory that they couldn't do that. But the, the problem is Iran attacked the nation. So what do you do? You let that happen? That'll happen again. If America was attacked by Russia and it, it, it withstood it, still I don't think America would not do anything. We'll see what happens. But if it does do something, there could be an escalation toward war. So these are prophetic times. And we do have to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. You did that this morning. Please keep praying for Israel and for the Middle East and for salvation among everyone there. There's actually, there's actually revival um, in Iran. There are people getting saved in Iran and in the Arab world. Now this, now, now we're gonna kind of, we're gonna join this mystery to another one and we're gonna kind of take up where we left off as well. And the thing is that Iran, Persia, is actually linked to a Hebrew holy day. You know what that is? It's the Feast of Purim. Purim, Esther, takes place where? In Persia, Iran. And, and the key thing you know, you must, you, most of you I'm sure know the story, is a man no, named Haman, Haman, he says, I'm gonna destroy the Jewish people. See, things, so, some things never change. I'm gonna destroy the Jewish people. And he sets a date to do it. And the date he sets is called, is the 13th day of the 12th month the 13th day of the 12th month, Adar 13. That's the day that's really linked to Purim. The 13th day of the 12th month is a day of a decree to bring death and destruction. Well, you know, to bring this, this mystery to the mystery from this morning, Roe versus Wade received its hearing before the Supreme Court on December 13th. That's the 13th day of the 12th month, the day of an evil decree that will bring destruction and death. But in the book of Esther, there's a second decree, and that's the one issued by Mordechai and Esther, and that nullifies the first decree. It overturns the decree of death and destruction. Now, in America, you know, it, well, actually, when this was went forth in the book of Esther, it says it happened on the 23rd day of the Hebrew month, Sivan. Sivan 23 is the day of a decree that overturns a, a, a decree of death and destruction. Well, you know, there was a case called Dobbs versus Jackson, and it went forth to the Supreme Court on June 15, 2020, but on, and it was gonna overturn Roe versus Wade. But the, in the Bible's calendar, it went forth on Sivan 23, the day that God appointed for a decree to overturn an evil decree of death and destruction. On the exact day, God is amazing. You know what happened? You know what Jewish people do on that day? They actually pray to God to overturn evil decrees, and that is the, the day that began the overturning of Roe versus Wade. God is perfect. Now I'm gonna to go to another mystery of the Hebrew holy days and something we're, that we've all lived through and we probably didn't realize we were living through it, um, and that is, well, actually, before that, let me, let me say this. The, the, the first holy day of Israel is Passover. Passover has to do, of course, with, with the, the Hebrews in Egypt focusing on Moses. Moses was the one who was born when they were killing children. It was the first mass killing of children that we have in history. They were taking the Hebrew babies and throwing them into the Nile. One of those babies was Moses, Moshe. He actually, he was put in the Nile and he survived that slaughter. He ended up growing up to actually undo, break the power that, of Egypt that tried to kill him and his generation. He was the child of the Nile. 
Is it possible that America has a child of the Nile? Was there a child born during this slaughter of children who could have been killed and actually was used by God? There was, and it was a girl. She was born in the first days when it was legal to kill her, kill children. She was born in that three-year period I told you about when abortion came to America up to Roe versus Wade, 1970 to 73. She was born right in the middle of it, and she, would, she was actually born when Roe versus Wade was sent to the Supreme Court. And she would grow up to go to that same court, and she would be the first Supreme Court justice born when it was legal to end her life. First one. She would come to that court in that crucial year of, of 2020. That's the jubilee of abortion in America. Her vote was the, la the vote that would actually overturn Roe versus Wade. That one vote, that one vote. And do you know when she would cast it? This is, of course, Amy Barrett. Do you know when she would cast it? In her year of jubilee, in her 50th year. And when the ruling was handed down, she was 50 years old. But all this couldn't happen with another mystery. This has to do with, I'm, I'm speaking about the holy days of Israel. And this one was colossal and we were all part of it. What if the ancient calendar of God was actually determining the shakings that came on America and much of the world? In Leviticus 23, God speaks of the, they're called the Moadim, the appointed days of God. And what if they actually determined what we went through that year 2020, which in the morning I show you is, the, is the, the jubilee of abortion in America, it played out yet in, in a form of shaking or judgment. What is the first, the first of all holy days in God's calendar? It is, again, Passover. Think about it. Passover. Passover is the, is the only holy day that's actually linked to a plague. Do you understand? Passover comes in the middle, it comes in March and April. And when March and April, when, when we were in the midst of Passover that year, there's a plague passing through the land. The Passover is about a plague passing through the land. And think about it also, Passover is the first national lockdown in world history. The nation was told by its leaders and its government, go into your houses, stay there, because there's a plague passing through the land. In Passover of 2020, it's the first time in 3,000 years that the Jewish people in Israel were told by the government of Israel to go into their houses on Passover and not come out until the next morning because a plague was passing through the land. First time since Moses, and it was happening throughout the whole world. It's like the whole world was, in the, was experiencing Passover. And, and, and in Jewish houses, in, in America, Jewish people were in their houses celebrating Passover, and they're talking about, they're recounting about how there was a plague passing through the land and they were locked in their houses in Egypt while there was a plague passing through the land and they were actually locked in their houses. All replaying and we were all part of it. Then comes the next festival in the calendar of God. What is it? It's called Shavuot. Translated into Greek, it's called Pentecost. This is a Hebrew holy day. Hebrew holy day. What happened on the day of Pentecost or Shavuot? Fire came down. It's the day of the Holy Spirit, fire, the tongues of fire, baptism of fire of God. So what happened the next, as the next holy day came in that year of shaking, you know what happened? Fire came on America. The nation's cities were set on fire as this day was approaching. In fact, the very night of Shavuot, when the Jewish people are lighting the candles of Shavuot, the fire ignited across America, everywhere. And so, so you have the same thing. And so and as Shavuot, or Pentecost, ushers in the harvest, the summer harvest, this harvest was ushered in a summer of rage and shaking across America. But then comes the next holy day. It's the holy day of autumn, and it opens up with the sounding of the shofar. What day is it? The Feast of Trumpets. The day is called, we might know it as Rosh Hashanah, but it's really, that means head of the year. It's not really not the new year. It's called Yom Hadin. In, in the, the Jewish people, they call it the day of judgment because you sound the shofar, and that's a sound to say that God is coming, that there's gonna be a day that we're all gonna stand before God, which is true, and when God, as the judge of the universe, will, will bring judgment, so this is the time you have to get ready. There's 10 days until Yom Kippur. They're saying, get ready. So it's called that. So the Feast of Trumpets 
The Jewish people, the eyes of their, their heart, they're to turn to God as the judge of the universe and the judge in his heavenly court. Well, could this also manifest in America? Well, as the day when the Feast of Trumpet came, something happened in America that year. And it's, it, it, it touched, as the trumpets are about the court and the judge of God, the judge of the universe, it touched the Supreme Court of America. At that point, it said, it said as on the Feast of Trumpets, it says God decides who will pass from the earth. Well, on that day, one of the Supreme Court justices, Judge Ginsburg, passed from the earth on the Feast of Trumpets. It's kind of like God is saying, you have your, you have your court, you have your judge, but I, I have a higher court. I, I, you have judges, but I am the judge. Trumpets begins at sundown. As the sun set, then the eyes of the Jewish world turned to the court of God, and the eyes of America turned to the high court of America because that's when they announced what had happened. Now, Judge Ginsburg was totally pro-abortion. And one of the things that happens on the Feast of Trumpets is people pray, they pray to repent of their sin. And so, but this was the sin of the Supreme Court. See, the Supreme Court is what passed Roe versus Wade that legalized the killing of millions. And so now on the day that begins repentance, God opened the door, allowed the door to be opened for that evil decree to be overturned. It happened on the very moment of the Feast of Trumpets. The judge of the universe, he says, you know, you can make your judgments, but I can overturn them. <laughs> on the Feast of Trumpets, now CNN will never tell you this, but this is the real story. And on the Feast of Trumpets, the people actually pray, God, the Jewish people, pray, Lord, overturn the evil decree or the evil of the decree. And that's how it began. And that same summer, just before the Feast of Trumpets, just before that happened, that case that would overturn Roe versus Wade was sent to the Supreme Court. If that didn't happen, if Judge Ginsburg did not pass from that time, it would never have happened. And it all happened, everything was coming together to the same exact moment on the 50th year of abortion. What was the next event on the sacred calendar? I spoke this morning about what God led us to do. And the thing is, it was also, though, part of this sacred calendar. It was the Sabbath after the Feast of Trumpets before the Yom Kippur, and it's called, as I said this morning, it was called Shabbat Shuvah. We didn't, weren't thinking about that at all. We had planned this for two years before it fell on that day. They gave us the National Mall for repentance to pray and gather with God's people and thousands of people gathering on the National Mall, people around the country, millions praying for repentance for America, and it happened to fall on that next holy day, which is the day of repentance or return. And it was called the return, as I said. And so we are praying. Now, now I want to do this. You know, when, when I, I shared it, when the, when the return was planned, we, had no, we could have no idea that, that eight days before that event, the Supreme Court chair would be vacated. We had, could have no idea that on that same day of the return, the President of the United States would choose that day to usher in the, the new justice who would overturn abortion, same day. Now, I showed this this morning for those who weren't here, but the thing is that it all came together at the exact moment. And the thing, and this time we should have the sound, so I want you to see it with sound, the prophetic moment. And that is when at the end, for those who weren't here, at the end of that day, or at five o'clock, I said, we got up to seal it all with the sounding of the trumpets. And I, and so we, we sealed it. I said, shout when you hear the trumpets. The trumpets are the sign of God's power. Six men came on the stage, and, they, and when I said, I said, now let the power of God go forth, go, they sounded the trumpet. And again, for those who weren't here this morning, it was the exact second, five o'clock, four minutes, and the 33-second mark that Trump opened his mouth at the White House and began the overturning of Roe versus Wade while the people were shouting, while the trumpets were blowing. And I want you to see this. Hopefully, again, it will work. So if you have that, guys, let's try it again. From here, Lord, we, as we seal the return and the power of God, now, Lord, let the sound of your power go forth to the world. In Jesus, Yeshua's name, 
Go! I stand before you today to fulfill one of my highest and most important duties under the United States Constitution, the nomination of a Supreme Court Justice. That is the power of our God. That is the power of your God. It was God who did it, and God showed himself that way. Now, I said, when I saw this, and I didn't see it at the time, we knew it was prophetic, we knew something was happening, but we couldn't see it until later when I looked at the tape and we went over and over and over again, and I saw it was the exact second. I said, God, that was mind-blowing. But you could have done something better. See, it's always good to correct God if he goes off. And then it, it said, God, there were six trumpets, but, you know, in the Bible, there's always seven trumpets. Revelation, seven trumpets. Jericho, seven trumpets. I said, God, it would have been nice to have a seventh trumpet. Why six? And then it hit me. Can it, who is your president? His name is Trump. He was the seventh trumpet. Trump was the trumpet. The trump sounded. In the year of Jubilee, the trump sounded, and God reversed the curse. In fact, he, in fact, it's amazing. I mean, God is so, in fact, when I said, I said, call for the trumps, the trumpets to sound, that's the second that he sounded, the trump sounded. Do you know something? I didn't plan this, but you know something? When Trump was born, and this is not about Trump, you can feel whatever you want about him, but God uses whom he will use. But the point is, the point is, you know, he, when he was born, he was born on a Friday. That Friday, actually, you know, every Friday, the Sabbath, is there is a an appointed word that is read in the synagogues appointed from ages past. So here, Trump is born. You know, you know what the word was? The word was talking about the making of the Trump, the making of the trumpet of God. And that and how it came forth. And that's when he came forth. Now, the mystery, now here, I, I promised this morning that I would tell you more of how a mystery came about, and that is this. It was a Friday night in October. It was Beth Israel, the, the congregation I lead in New Jersey, outside of New York City. I was led that night to share one of the mysteries from the book that had just come out, the Josiah Manifesto. Now, the thing is, the thing, I don't often do that. We have we speak about everything else, from, but I was led that night to speak about one of the mysteries. It's the mystery that I, I've given a taste of here that 50-year jubilee mystery, where things that happened 50 years ago, actually when they come to the jubilee point, something happens that's linked to it. And I took the mystery from 1970 to 2020, as I did here, also, but it continued. And I ended with 1973 and 2023. I, I ended at the beginning of 2023. Speaking, But the mystery was not gonna stop. See, the night that I shared, that Friday night that I shared of the 50-year mystery, that night was the 50-year anniversary of a calamitous event that struck the nation of Israel. It was 50 years to the day of the Yom Kippur War. Some of you may remember that. The Yom Kippur War, well, before I even say that, before the night was over in America, just like last night here, the parallel event would take place 50 years later, begin. And the following morning, people who were at the service were saying, you just spoke about this, it just happened. What was the Yom Kippur War? And that's where I say we, this may tell us exact events for the future. The Yom Kippur War was a massive ground invasion of Israel. There had been no massive invasion, ground invasion of Israel for 50 years. But the mystery ordained the coming of another one. The, mystery, the invasion of 1973 struck Israel, caught them off guard. And so 50 years later, to the exact, that exact weekend, the second invasion would catch Israel likewise totally off guard. The thing is that, that not only that, but the thing is that the, the, the day that they struck on the Yom Kippur War was a Sabbath day. The day of October 7th when Hamas struck Israel was the Sabbath day. The day that, that Israel was struck in the Yom Kippur War, the invasion happened on a Hebrew holy day, Yom Kippur. The day that Hamas struck 50 years later to the weekend was also a holy day of Israel. 
Simchat Torah. I'm sure Hamas had no idea. The mystery ordained that in the year, 50 years, to the 2023, the, in October of 2023, the first Saturday of October, there would be an invasion and a calamity would come, and so it did to the exact day or the exact Sabbath. Now, that brings us to something else. See, that all, where are we now? Because the issue of Israel, I don't know if it's an accident, it's, how, it's again now, America and Israel. You know, just before this happened, we don't know what's going to happen now. But what, before this happened, I don't know if you watched the news, but the relationship between the Biden administration and Israel has been getting shakier and shakier and shakier. Now, the thing is, America... The culture, we watched our culture turn away from God, and what that does is that invokes judgment. And we are, we are ripe for that. But the thing is, it's kind of, it in many ways been held off because there's another principle. The Bible says, if you bless Israel, you'll be blessed. If you curse Israel, you'll be cursed. This is held true from the days of the pharaohs of Egypt to the United States of America. Which nation has blessed America in modern times more than any other, or blessed Israel? America has. Which nation has been the most blessed? America. But if America turns away from Israel, what will God do? See, it's almost like that's the only thing holding back, and, and it was breaking. It was cracking. We don't know what's going to happen now. But the, I don't, it was just about two weeks ago that America, the, or the, under the administration, abandoned Israel at the United Nations. They basically said, Go ahead, they, the nations that were really against Israel, they let them vote and they did not cast a veto, they let it go. That same day or that night is when that bridge over Baltimore collapsed. Now the thing is, here's the thing. You know, we have a national anthem. We sing the national anthem. The national anthem was written at the Baltimore Bay just where that bridge was. The Brit, by who? By Francis Scott Key. And Francis Scott Key, remember, said, oh, say, does that, does that star-spangled banner still wave? Is the flag still waving? America will survive. The flag is still waving. That bridge is called the Francis Scott Key Bridge. That's what collapsed on that day. And then a week after that, not long, just in the last few weeks, another icon of America, the Statue of Liberty, was struck by lightning on its torch, I mean, tor the torch, exactly, which is about the fire of that. And then the next day, the White House, Biden had a phone call with Israel, if you, you were watching the news, and Biden was real mad, and it was an angry call, and he told, he basically threatened, we're going to cut off our support to you if you don't do what we are telling you to do. That's what he said. And, and the thing is that, and, and the, thing, the problem, and it's not to get political, but the thing is that, they're trying to eliminate Hamas because Hamas is a danger. If this happened in America, we would go crazy. Okay, but they're trying to eliminate it. But they're saying basically stop. So, so that puts Israel at risk if they don't eliminate that. The day after that call, when they threatened Israel, I don't know if you watched it, there was an earthquake in America. The earthquake struck a place where it rarely strikes, and that was New York and New Jersey, where I am. In fact, when it happened, I was 15 miles from the epicenter. And that's the first time I've ever experienced an earthquake, most of us there. But the interesting thing is the earthquake, there's never been an earthquake like that in the Northeast since the year 1783. 1783 is the year that America began as a confederated nation. That's the year that the end of the, the War of Independence, and that's the year you had the confederation. Well, it's interesting because there's a pattern of judgment, and I wrote of it in the Harbinger, and that is that when God is shaking or trying to get a nation or even judging one, he strikes the foundations of the nation. In the Harbinger, those who know it, when I wrote that, is that the 9-11 the struck the very ground on which America was dedicated to God on the day of its birth. And so now you have all these foundations. You have the, the national anthem, Baltimore Harbor, the beginning of our national anthem. You have the Statue of Liberty. You have 1783. All these things speaking of the foundation. Israel is in danger from Hezbollah. Hezbollah is sending, is, is, is a, works basically for Iran. And they're sending, they already sent rockets while this, this happened. There was just something between Israel right now in the last 24 hours and Hezbollah. The Hezbollah is more dangerous than Hamas. 
got thousands and thousands of missiles aimed at Israel. So that's where the danger is. That's Lebanon. Lebanon is where it all is. Well, you know, the earthquake that hit America after Biden threatened Israel, its epicenter began right next to the town called Lebanon. And there was the other town next to it is called White House. White House and Lebanon. And there is a third town, I'm just throwing this in, it's called California, Califon, which is named after California. Could there be something in California coming? We shall see. And then right after that shaking comes the eclipse. How many people watch the eclipse? Okay. Now, it's a natural phenomenon, the darkening of the sun over a land, but in the Bible, the darkening of the sun can be a warning can be a warning of judgment. The earthquake, I don't know if you heard, measured 4.8 just a few days before the eclipse, 4.8. The sun darkened on April 8th. That was the date was 4.8. Again, in Exodus, it speaks about judgment and plagues coming on a land. Somebody noted that you take 4.8, 4, so 4.8 was the earthquake, 4.8 was the eclipse, and in Exodus 4.8, it says if you didn't believe the first sign, they'll believe the second sign. Now, when the 2017, now listen, a lot of stuff is said about things. Some things go off the wall, but we also have to take note. In the 2017 eclipse, which came over America, it passed over seven towns with the same name, which are, it was Salem. Salem is Jerusalem. That was 2017. That same year, a few months later, President Trump would issue the Jerusalem Declaration, recognizing Jerusalem for the first time in 2,000 years. And you had that eclipse that had Salem, Salem, Salem. So the first town was Salem, and it went all the way across America. Well, the interesting thing is this eclipse passed seven towns with the name Nineveh. And the first city it passed, or not, well, well, before it passed the first Nineveh, it passed another town, city named Jonah. Now, it's interesting, so, so what could, could that mean something? Well, I wouldn't, just, I wouldn't ignore that because the first one came true with Salem and Jerusalem. Nineveh, what is that about? Well, before I get to that and where we are now, to answer that question, I want to, I got to go back to something here and that's going to bring the Josiah mystery to this mystery. When I wrote The Return of the Gods, that was the book before the Josiah Manifesto, while I was working on it, one of my associate pastors is woken up in the night and he has, he, he, he says, I got to tell you, he, he, he said, I have to tell you this, Jonathan. I said, what? He said, he said I saw, I, I saw that this, I wrote it down. I saw like a vision of, and you were in it, and you were, you, were, you were standing in front of all these altars of the gods. He says, and I heard God said, prophesy to the altars. And you brought forth a word to the altars. You spoke to the altars. And when you brought forth the word, the altars cracked apart. And spirits came out and left. Now, he had no idea I'm working on the return of the gods, about the gods in our culture and the altars. He had no idea. Now, the most colossal altar, to bring this all together, the most colossal altar we have had in America, the evil altar, was the altar of Roe versus Wade. Because on that altar, an altar is where you slay, you shed blood. On that altar, over 60 million children were offered up. The day, now he said he saw when you brought forth this word and the altar cracked. The day I finished the word of the return of the gods, that very morning, I was actually with Perry Stone, the very morning I wrote down the last words of the book, the hand, that was the morning of June 24th, where God, the hand of God broke the altar of Roe versus Wade. On that day, now, when Elijah, what did, but that was a sign that most believers missed. The sign, the broken altar is a biblical sign. It is a biblical sign of something very important. You see, when the, when the people of Israel returned to God when there was revival, they didn't have gospel tent meetings, uh, which are great. They didn't have that. The sign of revival, they was they'd go up to the altars of the gods and they would break those altars. They would break the altars on which they killed their children. And so on that day, God, the hand of God, broke the altar on which we killed our children. And we know that's not the end of the, of the story. That's the beginning of a fight, but that was a sign from God. 
You see, that is a sign of something very big, and I'm going to to tell you why. And that is linked to the man named Josiah. See, Josiah was the most unlikely person because, I mean, he came, his father was a disaster. His father was an evil king who hated God. His grandfather was even more evil. So he's born under evil and evil and evil, and his whole culture has gone evil. Israel has turned away from God. They're worshiping the other gods. They're offering up their children. They're into sexual immorality. Sound familiar? They're into gender confusion. Sound familiar? And they're persecuting the people of God. Sound familiar? These are the days of Josiah. And the thing is, he was born when judgment was hanging over the nation near the end. Judgment was coming, but God raised Josiah up to give the nation a last chance for revival. You understand? The Josiah moment, what what that was to break such an altar, that's never happened in in, in American history. I don't know that it's ever happened in any history. Broke the altar of abortion. You know, most colossal, you know what that's? That's the sign we are at the Josiah moment. What does that mean? America is standing in between judgment on one hand or revival on the other. And what is that? That's also the Nineveh moment. Here we have an eclipse, all Nineveh, Nineveh, Nineveh. What is Nineveh? was standing before judgment on one hand, revival on the other. We have to know the signs of the times. You see, revival is not a nice thing to have. Revival is, is life or death. It's not that we can have nice services. Revival is the life or death of America. If America does not have revival, America is gone. If America doesn't turn back to God, America is lost. That's why this moment is so crucial, and we, you, as the people of God, have to know it. You have to be the Issachars of God who knew the sign of the time and what Israel should do, what America should do. And Josiah is the key of this moment. And it actually gives, he actually gives what we need to know, how to survive, how to stand, how to prevail for us, for your family, for your nation, for your lives, for your church. That's why on the very day that I finished the return of the gods, as God said, okay, now I'm giving you the next book. Now you have to give an answer to God's people, my people. You have to give an answer because here you have the problem. You have to give the answer. The last hundred pages are the guide, the manifesto, for now and for the end times. The keys, and the thing is we can't go through it, but I can give you a little taste of something as we bring this home. What were the keys of Josiah? What were the secrets of Josiah? How did he do it? How did he be what he, you know, you know Josiah was not overcome by the darkness of his culture. Josiah actually overcame the darkness. How? Well, he was living in the days that we're living in, the same thing. There was apostasy in God's house. There was all these things. Again, gender confusion. It's not new. It went back to the pagan days. Josiah's born in the time of darkness, but one man literally changed the course of his history, of his nation. One man with God. He stood against it. Now, here are some of the keys. I'm just going to give a little taste of some. Number one, Josiah said, in order to serve God, I have to separate from the darkness of my culture. He said, I cannot go, and you know, that is crucial. Remember Gideon? Gideon, and he spoke about this this morning, Pastor Jordan did. Gideon was gonna use to do great things for God. But in order to do that, God said, there's one problem, Gideon. You have an altar of Baal in your backyard, and you're gonna have to do some. So he goes there, he smashes the altar, and then God says, I can use this guy now. If you're going to do good, great things for God, you got to deal with that thing in your life. Josiah not only smashed the altars of the culture, he also smashed the altars in the palace and in the temple. So the thing is, if there's anything in your life that is not of God, that it's an altar, you got to smash it. You can't live with it anymore. You got to smash it. Any habit, any indulgence, any thought, any attitude, anything you do, smash it so God can use you powerfully. And if there's anything that's not in your life that is that God is saying, listen, you know I've been calling you up. I've been calling. Take the step. Take it even today before you go to bed. Take the first step. Small. Take it. Josiah. Josiah did not care what people thought. 
He didn't care what man thought. He didn't care what the majority thought. He didn't care what the polls said. He didn't care what was politically correct. He only cared, God, what do you think? What do you say? He didn't bow down to the gods. He stood against them. He broke down those altars. Josiah, more, so much had to be plugged into God. He had to separate, plug out, plug, you know, unplug himself from the junk in the world. He had to plug himself into God. You cannot fight the darkness without the light. You, you know, you know, the antidote for what's happening in America is not that we're calling out sin. It's that we're bringing in the presence of God to overcome the sin. And that's true in your life too. The only way to overcome sin is not by trying to not sin, that's all good, but bringing in the power and the presence of God. The only way. Josiah led his entire nation in the story to the worship of Passover. At one point he calls the whole nation together for Passover. Passover is about what? The lamb. Who is the lamb? Messiah is the lamb. Jesus is the lamb. So the focus, if there's going to be any real revival, the power is only in the Lamb, in the cross and resurrection of Jesus by the blood of the Lamb. That's it. It's not the other stuff. That's where the power begins. Josiah was one man, one life, and yet, you know, can, can God actually use one person? To, can we change the course? With God, you can do anything. He had one life, one man to God actually kept off the hand of judgment for a generation. One generation can change the world with God. Twelve people can change the world with God. One Elijah can change a nation. One Paul can change the world. Yes, we can if God is looking for the one whose heart is completely his. We live in the last days. He, he, days of evil. Well, so did Josiah lived in the days of evil, last days of that Israel. And he knew something. See, a lot of believers are, are, are scared of what's happening and they're trying, listen, I, I just want to survive. I don't want to lose my job. I don't want to do this. It's, it's from, I want to survive the next problem, the next attack. That's not why we're on earth. We're not here to survive. Josiah wasn't on here to survive. He, wasn't, he knew he was on earth on a mission from God to touch his world and touch his generation. So are you. He was there as a light. We are light. The light to the world has to be an active agent. We're not here to try to just stand where we are. We're, we're here to affect the world. It doesn't matter if you're in a Christian age or a non-Christian age or an anti-Christian age or a pagan age. It doesn't matter. You're called to be the light to that generation. Josiah lived in the days of radical evil, and he knew something. And what is that key? If you're living in the days when evil is radical, then you have to get radically good for God. If the, if the evil is getting radical, we have to get radical for the good. Radical in prayer, radical in faith, radical in joy, radical in love, radical in the word, radical in confidence, radical in power. He was on mission for such a time as this. You see, God has called you. We are here. This is a critical moment. And listen, of all weekends, we have the weekend when Israel, when this, this, this attack comes on Israel. You know, Israel is, this, is physical, but you are the spiritual Israel. If you're born again, you are born of Israel. As Israel is to the world, you are to God. That is your physical nation. You are the spiritual Israel. And so if Israel's being attacked, you know the enemy's attacking you. But you know... He's been attacking Israel for a long time. But the amazing thing, it's the most attacked nation, but the amazing thing, and here we are in this year and this day and this weekend, yet after all these years, the amazing thing is not that Israel's been the most attacked nation, because that's the devil. We, that's going to happen. The amazing thing is that Israel still exists. It still lives, because God lives. The God of Israel lives. The world and the devil rage against God and they rage against Israel and they rage against you. But you know what? They're all going to pass away. But the word of our God shall not pass away. The, the love of God shall not pass away. The promise of God shall not pass away. The power of God shall not pass away. The world has gods and idols and sacred cows, but our God is God. 
We have the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The Almighty is his name, and he has chosen you to be his servant for such a time as this. And he says to you, I have placed you in your mother's womb, my child, for such a time as this. I did not call you to live in bondage. I called you to live in victory. I did not call you to be defeated. I called you to overcome all things. I have chosen you. I have appointed you for this hour. Now arise and take up your mantle and serve me with all your heart. Put the past behind. Shake off the chains. Go higher and I will be with you. I will bring it to pass. For thus says the Lord, Kumi ori kiva orech ukvod Adonai alayak sarach. Arise, man of God. Arise, woman of God. Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you in the name above every name, the name of Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah, the light of the world, the glory of Israel, and the lion of the tribe of Judah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the, let's all rise, let's all rise. We gotta pray if you're not already standing. Father, we pray for revival. Lord, we don't just, we're not only, we're singing about it, but we're also praying for revival. Let there be revival on this land. Whatever it takes, let there be revival. Whatever it takes, Lord, we ask, Father, touch this nation, Lord. Give it one last chance, Father. Let it be the light again. Light up the light of the fire of the city on the hill you called into existence. Lord, let that Lord let there be we pray for the end time revival. We pray for the nations to come into your light. We pray for Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. And we pray for your, the Middle East and we pray for your kingdom your coming there, Father. Lord, let there be revival. And Lord, Lord, we don't just pray for revival. Lord, we choose and decide and commit to live in revival. Lord, we want to live on fire and we are committing to you. We're going to do that. Whatever we have to do, we are saying, yes, we will do it. Whatever we have to put out and break, we will put out and break it. And we'll take a step even tonight. And whatever we need to take up, we are saying we will take it up. Lord, we want to fulfill your calling. We don't want to miss it. Lord, you put us here on earth for this hour. So, Lord, we all want to rise to that calling. So for whatever it takes, we commit to you, Lord. If you put that thing on our heart, we're going to go with you. We're going to go as you lead us. But we choose revival. And all revival begins with repentance. So we turn, we commit to turn to whatever we have to do, Lord. Whatever we have to do, we're going to take a step even today. Lord, Father, use us. Have your way with Evangel. Lord, have your way in Florida. Have your way in Washington. Have your way in this election. Have your way in America. And the way in the church in America and all over the world. Lord, anoint and have your way. We praise you and bless you and thank you. In the name above every name, the name of Yeshua, Jesus our good, good, good shepherd. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm going to ask for the trumpet, whoever's got the trumpet, and yeah, and the, the microphone stand. sound the trumpet as it was sounded on that video that you saw. And the thing is, this is real. It's not about the trumpet. It's about the power of God. But God ordained this. He said, when you sound this and you're in a battle, you're going to win. That's what he said. Then when the, when the trumpet sounds, shout and the walls of Jericho will come down. And when you hear the sound of the trumpet, you get up because you get back what you lost in the year of Jubilee. And so I'm going to sound the sound of the power of God. And when you hear the sound, I want you to shout like Jericho. Okay? Can you do that? Do you want the walls to fall down? Not these walls, but the walls that you're dealing with. All right. So the thing is that I want you first, I want you to pray, and then I'm going to give you the blessing. I want you to pray 
for whatever you need, whatever that thing is, whether you need so many in your life, I want you to lift it up now. Just lift it up to the Lord. Lift it up and be free in lifting it up. Whatever it is, where the breakthrough, the breakthrough that's needed, the power that's needed, the blessing that's needed, whatever that is, I want you to lift it up to God right now. And that's what we're going to pray for. That's what this is going to be about. Whatever in your life, in you, in your home, in your family, in your job, in your calling, in your ministry, in your world, people around you, whatever that is, lift that up. Whether it's overcoming, whatever that is, I want you to lift it up now. As you lift it up, then when you hear the sound of the shofar, then shout for victory and breakthrough. And believe God and receive that from him. Just give you a little bit more. Just lift it up to God. You can say it. You can whisper it. You can do it in your mind or you can say it, but lift it to God. And Lord, we praise you and we ask, Father, I ask for victory over every, every wall, every bondage, every every hindrance, every obstacle, every need. Lord, the power of you that was represented by this symbol, this vessel, the power of restoration, the power of reconciliation, the power of release, the power of freedom, the power of liberty, the power of redemption, the power of victory the power of breaking down every wall. So, Father, Lord, we lift this up to you. Any wall, anything, whatever that is, we lift it up to you. And when you hear the sound of the trumpet, shout and keep shouting and receive and believe victory and power. In the name of Yeshua, Jesus, we sound your trumpet. scares me when, I, when that comes out. It's the power of God. Now I want to give you the blessing. This is the blessing that God gave in the book of Numbers. And he's, this is the amazing thing because it's the only blessing that God himself wrote the words to. It is God's blessing. blessing, you are placing my name upon my people. You are the people of God. This was given to Israel, but again, you are, you are born again as a citizen of Israel. This is your blessing. He said the sons of Aaron will give it, and for me it's a blessing to do it because I'm a son of Aaron, to give it to the people of God. So, But this is not from me, this is from God. Receive it as from God. So I'm going to do it in Hebrew as God gave it and then in English. I want you to lift up your hands to receive from the Lord. And whatever you need, again, receiving, blessing, blessing, presence of God, the power, the grace of God, the shalom, all the blessings of God, that's in this blessing. I 
Adonai Vayishmerecha Ya'er Adonai Panavalecha Adonai Panavalecha V'yasem L'cha Jacob cause his face to shine upon your life, upon your home, upon your coming and going, upon all the works of your hands, upon what he has called for your life to be. And the Lord pour out his grace upon you. The Lord God of heaven and earth the eternal, the unending, the great I am, lift up the glory of his presence upon you, you his servant, upon your face, upon your heart, upon your thoughts, upon all the moments of your life. And the Lord give to you his shalom, life, fullness, Peace, blessing, restoration, breakthrough, power, victory. B'Shem Yeshua HaMashiach in the name of Jesus the Messiah. Or HaOlam, the light of the world. Uchvod Yisrael, the glory of Israel. Ba'ari Yehuda and the lion of the tribe of Judah. Amen. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you outside. God bless you.